today we are giving you a two for two for yes. games in one. So this is uh, Gan Shong Clever, which is in English. That's pretty clever. And then Don't Belt So Clever. I'm close close enough. With. I, I'm the one getting this. Yeah. I'll say the hard word. Twice as clever. Uh, there's actually a third one. I don't remember right, what that one's yeah. called. We I don't. don't we don't own that one. Uh, so we've got one and two. Uh, eventually, I'll probably pick up three, but. There's apps for these all now, yeah. so we end up playing those more than the actual games now. But um, these are basically dice selection and pressure. Roll and right. write. Roll and write. Yep. Yeah. Yes. What's the most... Uh, most well, well, I don't know it's the most important, but most it's important. important. It's important. It's Follow important. along. Hit that yes, subscribe please. button. Join us. We need you to come with us on this journey as we go through the collection of games. Yep. So as far as who makes this, let's find out. All right. So for both games, so the designer and the artist are both the same. The, the designer is Wolfgang Warsh and the art is Leon Shipper. Um, Board Game Geek ratings are pretty much the same. Gonshan, the original 7.6, the sec the sequel 7.5. Gonshan Clever came out in 2018. Uh, the second one came out in 2019. And the MSRP is the same at $19.95 a piece. No information on the third one? Um, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably the same price, $19.95. And it probably artist. came out another year. And it probably came out in 2020. Maybe they came out in 2014. They just released it. <laughs> Are you from the future? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, as far as quality components, there's not a lot in the box. There wouldn't be room because it's a tiny box. There's dice. There's dice in each one, six in both of them, different colors. So if you depend, you know, right. if you have a preference for purple or pink dice versus purple dice, you got your choice of the games. Uh, there is in both of them a score pad, which is actually it's a pretty, pretty good size. Score yeah, pad. pretty good size. Probably half the box. I mean, I, th I think this is one of the games where you could laminate and use a dry erase if you really wanted to, but mm -hmm. you got plenty of paper. Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few, but you are going to burn one per player. Right, each and, time you play. and the back side of the sheet is also your score. Yeah, the back side is a score sheet for the one through four players, but that means you're going to be using four of these every time you play if you play four player right. games. Uh, and then apart from that, all you get is the box. The box itself, and oh, you, know, you, box. Get, you get markers, to, but they're really bad markers. They, they won't last yeah. too much. Yeah, much they don't last very long. But you do use the box. Yeah, you use the box. So when you're playing, this silver platter is important. So you're going to put it out some way like that if you want, you know, however you want to display it. And then you're going to roll these dice, which we'll get into in, in the, the gameplay. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the quality of components i mean they're decent dice they got gold painting on some of them not, yeah, all, not of them. all of them but but some of them are highlighted with gold and you just basically the same for the other game it's just yeah. different colors yeah it's and yeah it's interesting they always have two that are highlighted in gold and i don't understand i don't know like this one has three yep, yep. this one has three this one's more special this one's got a white one uh so yeah it's it's kind of a hodgepodge really uh, nothing exciting about it. I mean, there, the colors there, are pretty. Yeah, but there's absolutely nothing special about the game. No. As far as components. The, these markers are awful. Yeah, they're terrible. Uh, the these are nice pads, but again, you're going to burn it's, through them. But it's just paper. Yeah. So given that, I, I can't see giving this more than really a 5 or maybe a 5.5, .5, just because I think the dice have they look special with the gold on them. 5 is pushing it. I mean, because there's just nothing to it. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing, but if we're just scoring on component quality, there's yeah. really no quality. Yeah. Um, so I'll go five, but that's that's the limit. I don't All know. right. Well, that's quality. Now yeah. on to theme. There is no theme. No, it's purely a roll and so a So I, I, I think we could say in A. Yeah, there is no theme. I mean, to rank. the box looks kind of Vegasy, I guess. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's got neon. And it's on definitely it. pressure luck. I yeah, mean, it's a huge part of it. So I mean, it, it is colorful. I give it that. Um, so from an art perspective, you've got you know color. Yeah, a two. <laughs> yeah, I will say if you do suffer from color blindness, this would be a game that would probably you, be you difficult. You cannot play. I couldn't see play. There's it. nothing to signify the colors. Right. It, I guess it would just depend on the spectrum that you can't see. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, you know, this is one you you might have to avoid if you right. can't. You have that you know challenge. Uh, as far as theme, I'm going to go ahead and give this a five as well. I just can't see 
There's I, nothing too great on it. Really. I can't give it a rating. It's not right. There's there's no theme. It, it's a it's not not applicable. Um, as far as the rule books, the rule books are fine. There, there's nothing special to them. They're only it's just super teeny tiny eight print. pages. Yeah, it's a really small font. Uh, it's white on black, so it's very vivid. You can read it easily. Yeah. Uh, they do give examples for all the different things. Which is things. nice because this is a puzzle game. Yeah, the, the, the puzzle is kind of figuring out how some of the right. patterns work. Because the first, the base game is pretty simple. The base one is pretty easy to understand. And we'll go through kind of how the scoring works and each one on both of them. But the second one was a little more complex. Mm -hmm. and maybe that's why it would be twice as clever. Is just to figure out how the dice scoring works. Right. Because it's a little more convoluted. I don't know what three it has because I've never even played it on the app, much less on the board game yet. Yeah. Um, so it, it, they probably get a little more advanced. Right. I would guess it was probably even more advanced than the number two one, but I don't know. Um, as far as rules, I'm going to give them a seven. They're fine. There's yeah. nothing wrong with them. There's nothing great about them. I can agree with that. Um, as far as gameplay goes, that, that, that's this where this is, game yeah. is. That, that, so, that's all this game is. Yeah, it's basically focused entirely on gameplay. So it's a very simple. It's very Yahtzee-like. You're yes. going to roll the dice. You're going to select one to keep, and then you're going to roll the rest of the dice, assuming they were higher than the one you selected. Anything lower than the die you selected, you have to put on the silver platter as an offering to the other players at the end of your round. So we'll just demonstrate here. We've got, we'll put the platter out there. We got roll, we got a purple six, a green three, a blue and an orange two, and a white and a yellow uh, one. So I can choose any one of these dice. If I choose the blue two. Well, you would look at your score yeah, pad you and see how you can score. score pad and decide which one you need. But we'll go through which, each of those in a minute. So if I chose the blue two, this is the same, so I get to keep it, the orange two. The ones, the two, one, white one and yellow one, I have to put on the platter because they're less than the others. So well, now I get to roll again. I get to roll for three dice I get to choose. I get to roll these three dice. I lost those two because they were lower than that. Right. You're going to keep doing that three times until you've got your choices. So I choose this one. I got two threes and a five. I'm going to take a three. I get to keep these both because three and a five are equal or greater than the three. You roll again. And I roll again. Final time. And now I got two sixes. Well, wow, that's actually a good roll. Um, I can choose either one I want, and I get to put it on here. And, and then, then the other one goes on up here. here. And then everyone else. This is else, one of the cool parts of the game. Yeah, everyone else at the table now gets to choose from the offering. They can choose the same one or mm -hmm. different ones. It doesn't impact each other. So each one gets to mark down on their sheet one of those dice. Um, so that's how the rounds work. Now, then each player takes a turn going around the table doing that, and you have to play six rounds of that in the game. Or over. if three or more, it's five. Yeah, it depends on the number of players. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, four players, it's four. Uh, so the score sheet pad, I'm going to put that on screen. I haven't summoned anything in a while. I think I'm going to summon this. I think will do it. It's been a while. Woo! <laughs> a while, even a new sound effect. Yeah. So now it's on <laughs> Almost screen. Almost Doctor Who. So on the screen, you can see now there are several boxes on here. And the, the, the score pad looks convoluted, but I'll explain it all. At the top, you've got the round markers, around uh, one through six, depending on number of mm -hmm. players. Each round, as you cross them off, you're going to get a perk. So the fir the first mar round in the in the, in Gong was this twice or no, no, this is it, this is Gong Shan clever. This is Gong Shan clever. This is that's pretty clever. So for round one, you're going to get a re-roll. So that means if I rolled a crummy roll, I can pick up the dice I still have and roll them again. Right. Um, and then I have to mark it off. So you would mark the circle around it to show you gained it, and then you scratch Lined it off whenever you're using it. Um, so that, then the next spot bonus you get is a plus one. That lets you claim another die. So you can either use that to claim a die you've already used or one that you haven't used yet. Or the same die. There. Or the same die. You're going to use each plus one you can only use to claim one die and it has to be a different die. Right. Um, and then the same thing. Circle, then draw. Yeah. Like and you can do that on other players' turn, too. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're going to choose the dice from the silver platter, you can use the plus one to choose one of those or one of the claim dice that the player used. But you have to wait until after the player has played all of their right. turn before you can do that. 
Um, then we have different color sections. These correspond to the color dice. Except for the white. Well, white is wild. Yeah. And that's in both games. That's the same mm -hmm. truth. Uh, so in the yellow section, you're just, if you choose the number, you fill it in, and it's kind of like bingo. You're filling in rows and columns. That's good. I, I didn't think of it that way, but you're right. Yeah, yeah I think I think bingo is a good analogy for it. Yeah, and if you get a row or a, col a row, you get perks that give you fill, let you fill in some of the others. So you can get a chain reaction in this mm -hmm. game very easily. So if I filled in the first top row of the yellow, I get a blue, and I can mark it any blue I want. And if that completes a column or a row, I get the perk from there. And it's and it, you can chain. And I, I've and chained. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, when you, you get that. a chain effect going across all of them, it's a lot of fun. You it can really, fill up is. your board really fast. Um, so then, and if you get the columns in the yellow, those are in-game victory points. Right. Um, and then there's one diagonal where you get a yeah. plus one. And then in the blue section, the blue is a little trickier. Blue, you actually add the values of the blue and white die together anytime you claim a blue. So when you do, you're filling in the numbers 2 through 12 because that's what you can get on two dice. And so potentially you could do that twice. You could pick the white die, add the blue, score it, and then pick the blue. And since you already selected the white die, you'd still yeah. have it and do it a second time. So, and if you use the white die, if, or here, or if it's in the silver platter, it's locked. So whatever you roll in the blue is going to add to that number. So you're going to, you can still use it. It's just, you get, you have to count right. it with the blue. Um, Vice versa works too. If the blue's locked, the same effect happens if you're playing it in the blue section with the white. The uh, green, if you go across the green, uh, you basically have to follow the rules of what it says on the pad, which is each die has to be greater than or equal to the previous value until you get all the way up to but a it, five. But it lists or a, a specific value, so as yeah. long as it's that value or greater. Yeah. Uh, orange is kind of like chance in Yahtzee. You mm -hmm. can just put anything in there. So, no rules. Uh, there's perks, but there's yeah. no rules. To so as you go across, there's perks on all these. Uh, orange does have some special where it gives you multipliers mm -hmm. times the numbers as you go across, which is nice. Um, and then purple, this one is one of my favorites. You Basically, each die has to be less than the previous die, except for sixes, because six basically is the magic number that resets that row. Mm -hmm. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, if you wanted. Or, or if you just, do six, six, one, six, and then three. Yeah. Then... So each six will reset your, right. your sequence for you. Green's probably my favorite. Uh, yeah, and a green just gives you points as you go across. Now, there's also these foxes on there. The red foxes that are on here are That can used. be huge. Yeah. At the end of the game, for each red fox you've completed the row or column for or filled in the boxes on these down here at the bottom, you get to take your lowest scoring section and, and score, score it again. again. So whatever you've got, you know, what you take whatever the lowest scoring section is, write it into that number, and then the number of foxes is a multiplier multiply. times it. So you can really score a lot of points in this, or like we did, you can really score <laughs> low, very low points because we neither did very well this game. So that's Gonshun Clever. Uh, as far as Dopel so game. clever, uh, this one's a little more convoluted, but it works the same. You want to? No, you can't summon. I have to summon. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do not. Have, I do not have that power. <laughs> All right. And on uh, Dopel So Clever, you have similar bonuses, but there's a new one that's added, which is to let you unlock a die. So you can, if you get a unlock, one of the dice you've already placed up onto the silver platter, you can reclaim to roll before you roll your dice. You can't roll the dice, see you got a really lousy roll, right. then unlock it. But you can unlock it before one of your rolls and add it back into your options. Um, as far as your other plays, these are a little more convoluted. So the silver section refer references the silver platter. So in this, whenever you roll your dice, oh, of course I roll one. That's any better. Give me a bigger number. Or just flip it to the number you want. Yeah, that'd be a much smarter idea. Okay, I'm going to put a five. <laughs> All right, so if I take the silver five, uh, silver five and play it here, anything less than the five, just like in Gongshun Clever, mm -hmm. is going to go to, to the, the silver, silver platter. But so I get to place this five, it's a wild, in just the silver section. So I can make any one of the fives in the colors down here a be the, a filled in because of this. Then, every die that I put into the silver platter, 
I also get to fill in in this section. But you just lost all those dice right. for other scoring. Right. So now I will only have one other die that I can score right. off of, and I will have wasted a turn. So you want to be careful when you decide to do that. Ideally, you'd play it, you'd get three, or, three dice, and you have three that you still Or maybe left. you saved up a bunch of the unlocks. and then Yeah, you'll be able to that, that would back. let you do it, too. Yeah. That would be very nice. Um, so that's silver. Yellow, this is really convoluted. So with yellow on this one, I do not score claim, well yellow in yellow. When, I remember that. Yeah, when you claim a yellow, the first time you take a number, they got the numbers one through five. Five, and, yeah, there's a six on there. One through six. Um, you claim the number. You put a circle around it. If you manage to fill in circles around all or any row and column, you're going to fill it in, and you get the perk on each one. After you place a circle in one, that unlocks it to be used to fill in with an X. If you fill in the X on it, then you start scoring points, kind of like the blue in the mm -hmm. other game. As you Just accumulate total the number, number of them, you get more points for having more of them. And it's some pretty, yeah. it's huge scoring. Yeah, if you get all 10, it's 165 points. But it's very tricky, because that means you basically had, you had to do, you did yeah. have to. You had to get 20 yellows. Now, so there's some perks that let you fill in some yellows, so you might be able to get it that way. It would way. be very, very it difficult. It would be very difficult to do that one all the way. Um, then the blue, this one is similar to the, well, the green or the purple on the other one. This one here, though, is your die has to be greater than or equal to the previous die roll. And this is, you count both the, uh, the white, and blue white and blue again, or white, whatever that is. It's a different shade of blue, darker blue. Um, you add them together and you put the number, and this number has to be greater than or equal to the next one. So ideally you'd have a 12 at the beginning and then you'd have a 9 mm -hmm. or 11 and work your way down uh, or the same as you go across. But you want your keep your highest ones at the beginning and go down. Um, so, But you count both dice. And again, there's perks along the way and you count the number of total of how you fill in similar to the green on the other one. The green on this one is, again, more complex. They just have to make everything a little more mm -hmm, complex. Just a little bit harder. So the green is a multiplier. So when you get the green die, uh, whatever value you get, you write into the cell, you multiply times the number that's on the kind of the faded number on there. So this one's a times two in the first spot. You put a four there, you get eight on that number. The next number you put in, you want to put a low number because you're going to subtract the second digit. You can see there's a minus between right. the so two. So hopefully you get like a one. Yeah, so if you get a one, you had eight minus two, that's a six that you're going to write in the cell box, that little little, little yeah, explosion little, sun like thing in there. That connects the two boxes. And that's where you get your then, points yeah. at the end of the game. Um, pink, on the other hand, is a similar, again, to orange in the other one, or purple. Uh, in this case, you can write any number you want in there, uh, but it gives you multipliers and it gives you perks along the way, similar to the purple track. So it's kind of a blending of orange and purple, and with a little bit of green thrown right. in because you have yeah specific, you have specific numbers, numbers, numbers you have to be equal to a greater than. Than. So it's kind of a melding of all three yeah. of those. Um, but definitely more complicated yeah. to score. So and it, it's one of those games I would definitely start with Gongshan Clever, not agreed. start with this one yet. Uh, this one took us a while to get, you know, we've had uh, some beginner game friend, gamer friends and family members. We taught them Gunshun Clever. It took us a while to ramp them up to this one. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely would not start with twi twice as clever. Yeah, it's definitely more complicated. Um, but, I mean, either way, these are great starter games. Uh, they're so much fun. They are a lot of fun, and they're very easy to learn. Uh uh, and they're simple to play. I mean, if anybody's played Yahtzee, they can pick this up. Yeah, you can knock a game out in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, this this is a good stepping stone for a non-gamer to mm -hmm. help them, like, get the, you know, oh, you want to try something? You, you play oh, Yahtzee, you, like you Yahtzee? should try this. You should try this one. Yeah, this is a good substitute for Yahtzee. And it, there's some great apps for this. I yes. Mean, it's, it's really, you know, good. That's game. the only way I play it now. I mean, we, we did it this time so that we could do the review, but yeah. generally it's the app. Yeah, it's it's you know very portable, and I believe all three of them are out on. That. I think so. Too. I just haven't tried the third one. Yeah, yet. I haven't tried the third one yet either. Because uh, typically, if I'm playing it, it's because I have just a couple of minutes to spare, mm -hmm. and I'm playing it. That means I'm usually playing Gunshot Clever. I'm not even playing the second one because it's a little more convoluted. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's very simple, and you know, once you get one, you'll probably want to step up to the others just because they're cheap. Well, it's not even just that. It's just that once you play Gosh on Clever so much, you like, I just want to do something a little different. And mm -hmm. then that's what the second one does for you. Yeah. 
Or you just like pink dice or different color dice. It's just a little bit more challenging. Yeah. I hope they come out with one that combines all the dice. That would be really cool. Because they're just pretty. <laughs> a pad this big. Yeah. <laughs> Get a tablet. Giant size gosh, not clever. All right. Uh, so as far as scoring gameplay, what would you give this? It's so much fun. Um, I mean, I, I'd give it an eight. I mean, I really enjoy the game. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah, I, I, I'm actually, I think, an 8.5 on this one just because it is it is so easy to teach. It's mm-hmm. it's good to, you know, just have, just to get out, oh, I need a filler for a couple minutes to right. play while we wait for somebody. It's a great game. And it plays it. at any level, one to four player. Yeah. And so uh, even solo, I play it solo, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I, as soon as we finished this game, I wanted to play it again because I was so frustrated with the low right. scores we got. And and it's one of those things, well, we could play it again if we were tired, you know. We right. could just do it again, you know. It's, and when you play it by yourself, you're always just trying to do better. You just fact, get a better score. And you know, even if you go home after this, I'll probably go up and start playing it on my <laughs> iPad just because I was so frustrated <laughs> with this. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, it's definitely a fun game. And it, it really and is. I had a really nice chain reaction set up where if I just got any number... I could have set it off, and unfortunately, I need it was dependent on Rob selecting dice. He had to get a six on his green die in order to do anything, and I was needing that green die to tra- trigger right. my chain reaction. And I rolled, and a, he rolled six. a six, so I didn't get to claim it. So I had, to and I only won by a few points. So, yeah. so, so if I hadn't yeah. got that green six, I'd have been ruined. Yeah, because I would have set off a yeah. serious number of points with that. So, I mean, it could have gone either way. We want, There was a four-point difference between right. us, uh, but then there probably was about a four-point difference between us and zero, too. So there was not a lot of points <laughs> scored. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. Now, 141 to 137. 37, which is still pathetic, because I've scored close to 300, if not more than 300 points on this game I've never many times. Uh, it's it's just it's a lot of fun to try to get those chain reactions it going, because really that's... Is. The only way you can score big points in this is really get that happening. Mm-hmm. But when it happens, it's awesome. And it feels good. Mm-hmm. So uh, I highly recommend this one. I do too. It, just simply because it's easy. Well, it's portable. I mean, it's easy to carry with you. You can take this it's anywhere. It's one of the few small box games that he likes. Yeah, it's a very, you know, very few of them. I do like this one a lot. Um, but, you know, and you know, Rob taught, taught me this. He had a yeah. copy. And then I think we had, there was a, uh, Stone Stronghold had a deal where you could buy, buy a bunch of games. Right. Did and, you do that during the buy yeah, ten? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I stocked up on. I already had Gong Chuck Clever. I got twice as clever. I got Second Chance. I got several yeah. of them. The Roll and Rights from it. But, yeah, and there's actually quite a few games in the series that they did, and I played quite a few of them, and they're all pretty good. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge. Some fan, are better so than know. others, but but, the, the, but these are all these are the good. best ones of the bunch as far as if you're going to look at any of the Stronghold small box games. So far, the ones I've found the best are these Gong Chun Clever series. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're these are really fun, and I highly recommend them. So uh, again, I also highly recommend you hit that subscribe yes. button. Follow and leave us a comment. What, yeah, if, tell if us you what you it. think. Yeah, what if you play it? What's your highest score? Yeah, that'd be awesome to hear. And yeah. I, I'm sure it's higher than 137 and 141. <laughs> Guarantee you that. Right? Yeah. If you if probably never played this game before, you could probably outscore us on that. I I thought I did okay. <laughs> so, Keith, thanks for shooting me down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go home, play it on the app. Yeah, I'm going to have to. And see what you get. All right. If you so, can't get 141, I'm going to be sad for you. I've scored less than 141. Oh, well, I've scored less too. I'm not saying this was the worst I've done. <laughs> it's definitely not the best I've done. I can tell you that. No, I, I think the most I've ever gotten was maybe over 200. That was it. Oh, okay. So, anyway, thanks for uh, joining us and looking forward to playing again. All right. Talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.